Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to dual boot Windows 10 with Ubuntu 24 LTS. Before we get started, I just want to make a few points. If you have troubles booting up Grub once you installed Ubuntu, make sure that in your BIOS you are allowing other bootloaders to boot up, because some motherboards don't do that and they need to be specified in the BIOS so that they can be allowed to boot other bootloaders. Let's get started! So we are here on Windows 10 and the first thing we need to do is to make space for Ubuntu. So let's right click on the start menu and we'll go here to disk management and let me increase the window here. There you go. And as you can see, in my case, Windows installed three partitions. We have an EFI partition here. We have the C drive where the installation is and we have a 500 megabytes healthy recovery partition. What I'm interested in is to shrink this partition to make space for Ubuntu. So to do this, we just right click on the partition and we click shrink volume. Now we need to decide how much space we want to give to Ubuntu. So in my case, I'm going to give, let's say 60 gigabytes. So I'll type in, in here 60,000 as this is in megabytes and then I can hit shrink. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. And now we have our space here where we can install Ubuntu. So what we need to do now, we need to close the window. Now, what we need to do here is to go to the Ubuntu website. So let me open up Microsoft Edge and I'll increase here the window. And let's type in, in the search bar Ubuntu and hit enter. And we'll click the first link. And we go to download. And from here, you can select the Ubuntu desktop, Ubuntu 2004 LTS. Once you click here, you will download the ISO. Once you downloaded the ISO, you need a tool to burn the ISO into a USB stick, for example. One that you can use is Rufus. You open up a new tab here, and we can type in, in here Rufus. Windows, any center. We'll hit the first link here. And you can see this is the utility. You can basically here select the device and the ISO, and you can burn the ISO to the stick, and then you can boot your machine from there. If you scroll down here, you can download the tool and install it. Then, as I said, you download the ISO from the Ubuntu website, and you can follow the instruction to burn the ISO with Rufus. Once it is done, you can boot up your machine from the ISO. And this is exactly what I'm going to do right now. So I'll meet you back shortly once my computer booted up again. So I booted up the machine now from the ISO and I'm given the option here to start Ubuntu. So I'm just going to go ahead here and hit the first option. And it's going to take a moment to boot up. There is a file system check here at the beginning. It's going to be completed in a few seconds. And we have now the choice to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. I'm going to go ahead now and try it because I want to adjust my screen resolution. So I'm just going to click the option here. It's going to take a second. There you go. And I can right click on the desktop here, display settings and choose the resolution, which is 1920 per 1080 and click apply. And there you go. Now we're ready to go. So it's easier also for you to see. Now we could play around with the ISO, but we want to install Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and double click on the installer. And we can select the language here. So I'll just click English and click Continue. I'll select my keyboard. So I'll leave to scroll down here to select mine. I'll do this in a sec and click Continue. And now here we have the option on how we want to install Ubuntu. So we have the normal installation, which is going to install most of the software, or the minimal installation with just the web browser and basic utilities. I'm going to leave this to the normal installation. And I want to download updates while installing Ubuntu. And this is happening because I have already internet here. I have an internet cable connected to my computer. So that's why it's selected. If you don't and you have Wi-Fi, you can click here and you will see your Wi-Fi adapter. You can select then the network, enter the password, and you'll be connected as well. The third option here is to install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. And I recommend you to check this if you are not sure that your graphic card or your Wi-Fi card is supported. So just click this box and then click Continue. Now, here we get the choice on whether we want to install Ubuntu alongside with Windows, erase the disk and install Ubuntu or something else. Now, we could select this option, but I rather want to do it manually because I want to make sure that I'm selecting the free space that we created in the Windows installation. So I'm going to click on something else and then click Continue. So as you can see here, we have several partitions on the disk. The one we are looking for is this 60 gigabytes partition here. So let's click the free space and let's create one partition. So I'm click on the plus 
And let's say I want to create a two gigabyte swap partition. I'm going to make it here two gigabytes. So I'm going to type in here 2000 because it's in megabytes and use as I'm going to choose swap area and click OK. It's going to take a second to create a partition. There you go. Now we need to scroll down to select the rest of this free space, which is right here. And let's click on the plus sign and we'll select the default here that's fine primary is fine and use as a ext4 file system i'm going to leave this as a default if you want to install some other file system type you can go ahead and do that but i'm going to choose ext4 because it's one of the most popular and one of the most mature and for the mount point i'm going to choose here the root directory now if you intend to create also a home partition you can create actually a different size giving for example here the root partition and create a new partition for the rest of the space and selecting as a mount point slash home. In my case, I don't need this. I'll just select the root directory and click OK. And now the last step is for the device bootloader. So right now it's selecting the disk. However, this is an EFI system and we have already the Windows Boot Manager here in SDA1. And this is why we need to install the bootloader if we want to be able to dual boot. So what we can do here, we can click the list and select here SDA1 Windows Boot Manager. And then we can just click install now and it's going to show us the changes on the disk and we can click continue now we can select the time zone here if you have internet it's going to be recognized automatically so we can click continue and we can create a username so i go ahead and type in my name and for the computer name i'm going to type in in here ubuntu 204 username is fine and my password and then I can click continue. Now it's a matter of waiting until the system finishes installing. So I'll be back when it's done. So there you go, the installation is finished. So we can click restart now and we need to remove the ISO and then press enter. So I'm just gonna press enter here because I'm anyway on a VM and it's gonna reboot in a second. And there you go, we are greeted by the grab bootloader where we have Ubuntu and also the Windows boot manager. So we can boot into both OSs. So let's go ahead and boot Ubuntu. Let's see if everything works fine. So I can enter my password. And there you go. Now I need to go through this setup here before I can adjust my resolution. So let me skip these steps. I don't need the live patch for now. And also this one, I click next. And I'll let the privacy that it is and click done. There you go. Now I can right click here, display settings, and select my resolution and click apply. There you go. So Ubuntu works fine. We can open up, for example, the terminal and we could check for updates, for example, with the sudo apt update and hit enter. Enter our sudo password. And we do have already some updates here. So we could update by typing in sudo apt upgrade and hit enter. And let's proceed with the installation. So everything looks good here. Let's open up the file manager. And we have here the new theme, the Yaru theme here. It's new with the new colors. So everything looks good. We can open up the settings as well. And we have them right here. That's the one I used before for the display. Let's see if we have also the extensions already there. Let's type in here extensions and we don't have that. So we can install it actually if you want to have the ability to tweak a little bit more the system. And let's go back to the terminal. So let's wait for this to finish and then we can install the extensions. And there you go, this is installed so we can clean up the terminal. We might need to reboot the machine for the changes to take effect, but I'm gonna do this later anyway. And we can type in sudo apt install and gnome-shell-extensions. And hit enter. Proceed with the installation. It's gonna take a second to do that. And there you go, we can close this up. And we can open up now the extensions. Let's see if it's installed. There you go, it's right here. And we have also GNOME tweaks available to us, by the way. So we can click the extensions, for example, and change some things. If you don't want to see the dock all the time, we can turn this off. There you go. And so it seems to be everything is working fine. So now that we have Ubuntu installed, you can use it normally as you would. But what if actually you don't want to use any more Ubuntu or you decide to install another distro? How can we remove Ubuntu from the system? And more importantly, how we can remove also Grub from the system? Because even if we remove the partition of Ubuntu, Grub is going to be still visible into the EFI partition in Windows. So let's go back to Windows and see how we can deal with that problem. So let me boot back, click power off here. 
and power off and restart. So let's go ahead and boot Windows here. It's going to take a second to do that. And let's enter my password. And let's open up again the disk management. So I'll right click on the start menu and go to disk management. So as you can see here, we have our partitions we created during the installation of Ubuntu. We have the swap partition here and the Ubuntu partition here. So if you say, for example, OK, I'm done with Ubuntu or I want to try another distro, we can remove those two partitions by right clicking on them and click delete volume and confirm this by clicking yes. And we repeat the process for the Ubuntu partition. So let's right click here, click delete volume and click yes. And there you go. Now we have the unallocated space. So this is the space where we could install another distro. Or if you want to use this space for Windows again, we can right click and click extend volume and click next. We can accept the defaults here because these are around 60 gigabytes, which is the default and click next and then click finish. And now we have one partition for Windows. Now, remember, we installed actually the grab bootloader into the EFI partition here in Windows. And we have to remove this, otherwise it will appear again when we boot up the machine. So to do this, there are several steps we need to perform. The first one, let's close the window. And let's right click again on the Start menu. And let's open up the Windows PowerShell, the admin version. And click Yes here. There you go. And I already increased the font sizes here so that you can see better. Maybe this is slightly too big, actually. So let me right click here on the icon and go to properties and to font. And I'll scale down this to 36. There you go. Yeah, that's much better. So the program we need to use to remove grub, it's called disk part. So let's type in disk part and hit enter. And in order to use this part, we need to list the volume and see the volumes on our disk. So let's type in list volume and hit enter. And as you can see, we have several volumes in our system. The one we are looking for is this 100 megabytes healthy system, which is a FAT32 file system type. And this is where Grub is installed alongside with the Windows Boot Manager. So we need to select this volume and we can do this by typing in select vol3 and hit enter. Now we need to assign a letter to this volume so that it's visible in the file manager. So we can type in assign letter equal X in my case, you can choose another letter if it's three in the system. Normally, X is always available, so I'm choosing X here and hit enter. And there you go. Now, let me minimize this window. And we need to open up Task Manager. So let's type in here Task Manager and hit enter. And we need to expand this window, so we'll click here on More Details. And we can click now on File, and then Run New Task, and then click Browse. And then we go to this PC. And we have our X disk here. Now, this appears also when we open up the file explorer. If we go here to this PC, the problem is if we double click on this disk on the file explorer, we have this error and we cannot actually access it. Even I click continue, it's going to give us another error. So I close this up because if you want to browse this disk from the task manager, it's going to be allowed. So right here we have the disk X and we can double click here. And as you can see, it opens up fine. And we have our EFI folder. So we need to open this up. And here we need to be extremely careful in choosing what we want to delete. You see here we have an Ubuntu folder. This we definitely have to delete. So we can right click this folder and click delete. And then confirm by clicking yes. And now this is the Microsoft folder. You can leave this alone. Let's check here the boot folder to see if there is any other reference to Ubuntu. And it seems to be there is none. So we are fine here. Other distribution, they might leave some other informations into the boot folder here. So they need to be removed. But with Ubuntu, it's not the case. So we can cancel out from here. And we can cancel out from this window and close the task manager. Now we need to open up again the Windows PowerShell here because we need to remove the X letter to the volume. We don't want to have this visible all the time. So to remove the letter, we can type in remove letter equal X and hit enter. And now we can exit this part by typing in exit. And we can close the Windows PowerShell. Now, if we would reboot Windows, we will boot directly into Windows again, and the grab boot loader is not anymore present. So this is how you can dual boot Windows 10 and Ubuntu 2004 LTS. If you have any question about the video, let me know in the comments below. So there you go, guys. This is how you can dual boot Windows 10 with Ubuntu 2004. It's a fairly straightforward process. However, if you have any question, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, I hope you liked it, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out, and if you want to support the channel you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. 
Thank you so much for watching the video again, guys, and I'll see you soon in the next one.